Hi, welcome to another GeoDev video. Today we're going to start a custom widget for Web App Builder using the most basic and simple method possible. I've already got Web App Builder running, so I'll browse to the extracted Web App Builder files and open the client folder in my text editor. To create our first widget, we'll go to the Stem App folder, the Widgets folder, and we'll create a new folder in there with the name of the widget we want to create. Today let's create a widget called My Search that'll be a search widget that'll maybe utilize a custom API. To see what files we need to create for this widget, let's go over to the Web App Builder dev documentation at developers.rxgs.com. I'll click the guide, go into widget development, and in, under the required files, we see that there are two files required, a JavaScript file and a manifest file. We'll create the manifest file first. That'll be always called manifest.json. And this is a JSON file that tells Web App Builder about your widget. We can see an example here that we can start with. We always want to make sure the name is the same name as the widget folder you just created. So that'll be my search. You can give it a bunch of metadata about your widget. And we want to add a properties. Properties tells Web App Builder specifically about the functionality that your widget supports. Because we're creating a very simple widget, for now we're not supporting uh, many of these functionalities like locale, style, config, or settings pages, but we can add those later. Next we need to add our JavaScript file. That'll always be called widget.js. To find a basic boilerplate for our JavaScript file, we can click here in the documentation. This is a basic AMD includes uh, boilerplate where you can see we're extending from Jimu slash base widget. That's the base widget that Web App Builder provides. And we can define out whatever functions we want here, including lifecycle functions. If we go to the documentation, we can see all of the functions that will automatically get called at different points in time along our widgets lifecycle. Let's define out the startup function. So this function will get called anytime our widget starts up. And let's just do a console.log to make sure everything's working. We also want to create a template file that will always be called widget.html. This is just going to be an HTML template. And for now, we'll just create an empty div. So that's all we need to get started. Let's check out our widget. To view our widget, we're going to use the config file paradigm. I'm going to go to the sample configs and copy this uh, JSON file up into the configs folder. I'll rename this to anything that I want. I'll call it dev.json. And now if we go to our browser, we can go to Web App Builder. And in the URL bar, just tack on stem app slash question mark config equals, and then the path to our config. In our case, it's dev.json. This is going to open Web App Builder and load the app uh, that this JSON file represents. So we can see in this JSON file at the bottom, for example, five widgets are being loaded. And in our browser, we can see that those same five widgets are being loaded up here in the top header, header bar. So instead we want of loading these five widgets, we want to load our widget. So that's as simple as giving it our name, my search, and the path to our widget. Also going to remove these references to these widgets. And now when we refresh the page, we can see that our widget is loaded. If I open our console, when I open the widget, there's our console.log. So we're good to go. One thing that Web App Builder provides for widget authors is references to some variables that you can use. For example, the map object. So in Web App Builder, uh, Web Builder uses the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, and it uses the map object. So if we go to the js.arcgis.com to see the documentation, we can go to the API reference, go into map, and any of these methods we can call on an instance of this.map that Web App Builder provides for us. So maybe we want to, say, set a zoom level on the map when our widget opens. All we have to do is refer to this.map, which is an instance of that map, and call set zoom on it. Now if I switch back to my app, now when I open our widget, the map zooms in. 
Now we have a widget on which we're ready to do more development. This is just one of the most basic ways to create a custom widget. There are a few other ways you can do it, like starting from one of the out-of-the-box widgets, or even using a widget generator. And we'll cover these in later videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.